So a lot of people think that there's certain myths that surround perfumes and most of those myths have no truth behind them. Uh, some of them do, but most of them are based on nothing. So in this video I'm going to kind of debunk some of the most popular fragrance myths. Starting with one of the most common, which is uh, discount fragrances are always fakes. Which is not true, because you might come across a website that sells a perfume which is usually $80, maybe for $40 or $50. And that's a really good deal, so you might consider maybe the perfume is not what it seems to be, maybe it's just water, some colored water put into a perfume bottle. But that's not always the case. Sometimes it is, depending on where you're shopping. Most of the time, if you shop at a reputable perfu discount perfume shop online, it'll be the real deal. So, some common examples of this is Fragrance X, uh, Fragrance Net, um, both of which I personally use. They do a really good job, especially Fragrance Net, of supplying a huge array of um, these fra popular fragrances for a discounted price. And at the same time, you do have to be careful because there are scams out there. Um, suppose you find a website uh, that's selling Creed Aventus, which is, I don't know, usually several hundred dollars for fifty dollars. That's, if it's too good to be true, it is. Don't buy something that's obviously too cheap and trying to advertise itself as this very expensive luxury item because it's not going to be the real thing. No one's going to sell a $300 or $400 perfume for $50 when they could sell it for more in a more expensive price. So use your good judgment and you should be good to go with the quality of your perfumes. The other myth that a lot of people have is in regard to testers. Tester perfumes are exactly what they sound, sound like. Uh, they've been tested usually in department stores like malls and stuff like that. Uh, so they're out of the box, they're out of their original packaging, um, they may or may not have a cap, um, they're usually sold in white little boxes, and they're usually sold for a cheaper price. So the myth about testers that some people believe is that they believe that testers are stronger than the actual normal perfume. And this is also based on nothing, it's a complete myth, because people think testers must be stronger because they are meant to entice a person to buy the actual perfume, and then the actual perfume isn't really all that great. But there's, there's really nothing behind it, testers are exactly the same as the perfume you're going to buy. And I've bought testers a few times myself, and they're they're exactly the same as the regular scent. Yeah, like I said, the only difference is that they've been used before, they're, and they're not in the original packaging. So, don't let that myth determine whether or not you buy a tester or the original fragrance, because they're exactly the same. And I would argue, uh, if you want a you know, better price, you can get the tester, because it doesn't have the original packaging. Now, the next myth is about fragrance concentrations. So I, I've talked a lot about fragrance concentrations in the past. There is eau de cologne, which is usually 2-5% to perfume oil. Then there's eau de toilette, which is usually 8-10% perfume oil. Then eau de parfum, which is quite a bit stronger, uh, maybe around 15%. And then there's much, much stronger concentrations like extrait, um, extract, and the intense, the intense, intense versions of perfumes. So, the thing about concentrations is a lot of people think that the more perfume oil a perfume has, the stronger it will be and the better performance it will have. And that is true to a certain extent, but not always. So, it, it really depends more on the type of notes that are being used in the perfume itself. Because some notes will naturally perform better than others. So. For example, uh, very, very strong, well-performing um, notes are musk, wood notes, 
leather, uh, incense, you know, anything that's heavy and resinous and, and just that sort of you know, pungent smell. In comparison to very, very light notes, which are citrus, some floral notes, ocean notes, that sort of thing, very light. So those lighter notes will never last as long as those heavier notes, even even if this lighter lighter note perfume is an eau de parfum, and then this heavy note perfume is a clone. So, for example, we have this. This is Taboo, which is an eau de clone, if you can read on the bottom. People think eau de clone, are, they're always weak because, like I said, two to um, five percent perfume oil, it's mostly alcohol and water, very low percent perfume oil, but this is a bomb. This is, as soon as you put it on, it fills up the entire room. It lasts pretty much all day. And that's because this is a very resinous, smoky, incensey, extremely spicy perfume. So all those notes are so strong that it doesn't even matter that it's an eau de clone. So if you want something that performs well, you really have to look at the notes themselves rather than depending too much on the concentration, because even though the concentration can help uh, a perfume last longer and perform better, that's not always the only thing you have to look out for. So Another common myth involves um, test strips. Test strips are usually pieces of cardboard or, or paper um, that you spritz some fragrance on and then you smell it, of course. Um, and a lot of people think that they're especially pop popular in department stores. They'll spray a bit on and let you smell it. Uh, the thing is, the myth is, people think if it smells good on the tester strip, it's gonna smell good on me. But that's not really true. So the reason for that, because it's a piece of paper versus your skin, which says warm, it's warm. Your skin is warm, obviously, if you're alive. Uh, and oil, your body naturally produces uh, skin oil and that's going to react um, with the perfume oils. That's not gonna happen when you put it on a piece of paper. So, uh, perfume might smell spectacular on a piece of paper, but when you put it on your skin, you might, it might be too musky, it might be too sweet, you might not like how it smells at all, because it smells completely different on your skin compared to the tester paper strip. So, if you're tr trying out, um, you know, samples, you just put it on your skin because you're going to get a better idea of um, the, uh, you know, its performance, how it smells, and all that. So, the tester really isn't necessary um, unless you're mainly judging the opening, the initial impression of the perfume. But other than that, it's better to use your skin. The last myth that I have to debunk uh, involves clone. So, there's a lot of confusion around clone because it's used in confusing ways. So, cologne is especially used to describe men's fragrances. Um, you know, you don't usually say perfume when talking about a men's fragrance, you say cologne. But the thing is, when you say cologne, people think eau de cologne, which, as I mentioned before, is a weaker, weaker, uh, in general, sort of fragrance. And the thing is, when a fragrance is called clone, it might not be eau de clone. It might be an actual perfume, like eau de toilette, or eau de parfum, or an extrait, or something like that. So, when you buy something that says clone, uh, don't automatically assume, assume that it's eau de clone, because most likely it's not that. It's probably an eau de toilette, or something similar. Uh, and you ha especially have to be careful because some brands have clone in the title, like Atile Cologne is a brand that has the word clone in the title, but they don't usually sell all the clones, they usually sell all the toilettes or something similar. So always double check, usually it will say somewhere on the box of the perfume or on the bottle itself whether, you know, what kind of scent it is, the concentration. So just kind of double check anything that says clone. Uh, before you buy it, so you know exactly what you're buying. Other than that, uh, that's all I have to say about popular fragrance myths. Hopefully I've done enough debunking for the video. 
Uh, if you have any opinions about these um, myths surrounding fragrances, you can leave those down in the comments below. If you liked the video, leave a like, maybe subscribe, and I make videos throughout the week, so stick around for those.